I'm here in the Oxford Museum of Natural History. And in this cabinet here, there's a variety of mammals that come from South America. Uh, South America in the Cretaceous period was connected to Antarctica, which was also connected to Australia, which allowed for the early marsupial mammals from Australia to migrate across Antarctica and into South America, which is why that you find things like opossums in, in South America and North America. However, for many millions of years after the dinosaurs became extinct, South America was largely isolated, which allowed for the creatures there to evolve in a completely separate way to the rest of the animals in the world. One particularly prominent group is the Xenarthrins, which includes the Anteaters, Tamanduas, Armadillos, and Sloths. Before and during the Ice Age, the Xenarthrins also had much larger forms than even this giant anteater here. For example, the Armadillos were represented by a group of creatures called the Glyptodons, which included genera such as Glyptodon and Didacurus which were essentially the size of small calves with very similar bodies to armadillos only instead of having plated shells they had a single almost tortoise-like shell and the slopes, which now live in trees had a much larger group of relatives the giant ground sloths which included genera like Megatherium which was the largest and Mylodon darwinii which some specimens even still have remains of hair and soft tissue on them, even though they died out about a million years ago. There are two extant genera of tree sloths. There's the less active three-toed sloth and the much more active two-toed sloth. Now despite this being much more active, they are both highly inactive, as they live purely on a diet of leaves. They're also quite stupid, sometimes rather amusingly, mistaking their own arms for branches and tumbling down to, to the forest floor. Out of these two genera, there are still quite a few different species. For example, the one shown here is the pale-throated three-toed sloth, with the Latin name Bradypus tridactylus, and tridactylus literally translates as three-finger. Now here you can see the fossilised remains of the largest ever sloth species, Megatherium, the giant ground sloth. This lived in South America around the time of the continental meetup between South America and North America, so this genus, Megatherium, would have been very likely to have faced creatures like Smilodon, which is otherwise known as the saber-toothed cat, and being this large, it's very unlikely that the adults would have fallen prey to them. Here we have the group of Xenarthans, which is most closely related to the Sloths. These are the Anteaters. These are quite bizarre creatures, with a very elongated skull housing a very elongated tongue. They do share some common features with the Sloths, which are chiefly their powerful claws and shaggy coat, as well as quite poor eyesight. Whereas the Sloths will primarily use their large claws for climbing through the trees, the anteaters will largely use their claws for breaking into termite mounds. There is a branch on the phylogenetic tree of Xenarthrans of smaller anteaters. These are the Tamanduas. These, unlike the giant anteater, these move between the forest floor and the canopy of the Amazon rainforest as opposed to the giant anteater, which lives on the vast open plains of South America. On the opposite side of the Xenarthran family tree is the group Singulata, otherwise known as the Armadillos. This group has more species than both the sloths and anteaters combined, and despite popular misconceptions, only one genus of armadillo can roll into a complete ball, and that is the three-banded armadillo. Armadillos are typically named after the number of bands in their armour, such as the one here, which is the six-banded armadillo. This armoured shell structure is a bony growth, which is then coated in keratin horn 
and in some cases also with a layer of leathery skin as well. Armadillos are by far the most successful group of Xenarthrans, having been the only group to successfully reside in Central America and in some parts of North America, like Texas and Arizona. They have a myriad of species, such as this tiny one here, which is called the Pink Fairy Armadillo. In prehistoric times, just before and during the Ice Age, armadillos reached enormous sizes, similar to that of a modern car. And since it's that time of year, here is a model of that large genus Glyptodon in my Christmas tree. Regarding the conservation status of these anathrons, the giant anteater is currently classified as vulnerable. This is due to habitat degradation and a slow rate of reproduction. This therefore means that it will have a declining population. Armadillos, on the other hand, are mostly classified as requiring least concern when it comes to their conservation. They are quite common in the Americas, although some genera are classified as vulnerable. The three-toed sloth, however, is in more trouble than the others, particularly the pygmy three-toed sloth, which is critically endangered. This is due to it relying on a small habitat which is quickly being lost. It lives in a group of islands and is frequently required to swim between these islands, but the habitat is being lost and they will at some point become extinct unless action is taken.